Hey everyone, Kathy the Vegan Prepper here. Welcome to my series. I'm taking you on as I am learning how to cook in my sun oven. Basically learning from scratch and experimenting with a lot of things so that hopefully you don't have to do quite so much experimentation if you get your own sun oven. Today, I'm actually making lunch. I'm cooking beans and rice in my sun oven. Don't go away. It's cooler than it sounds. I'm not cooking it in a mush. I'm trying to cook it today in two separate dishes so that they'll be two separate things. And so let's go ahead and kind of talk about some of what I am thinking of and things to consider in advance. And yeah, we'll get to the actual sun oven cooking in just a second. Vegan prepper. Vegan prepper. Also, please forgive me for a lack of like tons of action shots outside today with this video. I try really hard normally to, to show you a ton of footage of my sun oven, but today we have a high of 113. So we are officially entering our hot season now. I always say it is not hot until it's over 110. Um, we're not allowed to complain about the heat until it's over 110, but it's still pretty hot. Um, right now, actually it's 11 o'clock in the morning and it's 105 out there. So it's already pretty darn hot. And I'm not really wanting to do tons of shots outside. So I really hope that you can forgive me for that and just sort of stick with me as we're talking inside. But I will show you a little bit of stuff outside. My sun oven is already outside preheating and getting ready for what I'm going to put together. Um, basically, I'm going to do one dish of rice and one dish of lentils, probably like a lentil curry. I'm going to be using red lentils and basmati rice. Um, so basically the reason I've chosen these two items together is, or to cook at the same time is because they typically cook in the same amount of time on the stovetop. So it takes about 15 ish to 20 ish minutes to get, um, red lentils nice and soft. And it takes about 15 minutes. And then usually you let it rest for basmati rice to cook on the stovetop. So that's the reason that I have chosen those two things, even though I know I've used them before on the channel in a sun oven video, but that time I was combining them into one dish. My family and I prefer to have the rice separate and the beans separate in kind of more of a curry type dish. And so I'm hoping to be able to get some good rice and some good beans on the side so that we can kind of mix them as desired and add veggies and do all that stuff later. But anyway, basically my favorite way to make two things at once in the sun oven is using bread pans. So I have my lovely little mismatched Pyrex bread pans because years and years and years ago when I very first started homemaking, some of these, one of these is probably almost 20 years old. The other one is maybe a little newer, but still probably at least 15 to 16 years old. <laughs> um, I went to Goodwill and I got a bread pan. Uh, and then I realized I actually needed two. So I went to Goodwill. I got another bread pan. And so they are mismatched. That's why they're mismatched in case anybody in the comments is like, why don't you have two of the same color bread pan? You know, I know most of you were like, who would say that? Just someone, someone would. So I feel like I have to say something. But anyway, <laughs> I love it because two bread pans fit basically directly next to each other inside of the sun oven. My plan for this, even though it's not ideal, it's not my favorite for multiple reasons, is to cover these with aluminum foil to create kind of their own individual cooking area. Um, the other reason, the, so many reasons I don't like it, but also in the sun oven, it's not ideal because ideally you wouldn't put something inside that has a lot of reflection inside. It's possible it can kind of interfere, but it's not like an impossible thing um, to do. I have cooked actually before with some aluminum foil over the top of things and it turned out fine. Um, but just as, as a thing, like especially today with it as hot as it is, there is no way that that thing is not going to get to like 350 and maintain that temperature. It, there's just no way it's not going to do that. So I'm not going to worry so much about the foil with that. So one of the other things that I have done with both of my bread pans is I've measured the inside capacity. So that's definitely an important thing to know. Each of these bread pans is about five cups up to like right about there. So basically almost completely full, this will hold five cups of food. So obviously that's important to know so that you know how much you can fit in here, especially if you're cooking from dried goods. So my plan is basically to do one and a half cups of rice in one dish and then one cup of lentils in the other dish and then hopefully it will turn out or maybe a little less than one cup of lentils again we'll get into it 
hopefully it'll turn out to be roughly four to four and a half cups of food in either dish and then I'm not going to be worrying about cooking too much that will end up spilling over out of my dish. One more thing I would like to say about specifically cooking rice in this way. Uh, before we get to some shots of the food and we're looking at something possibly more entertaining than my face. But basically every single baked rice recipe that I have come across as I've been doing research for figuring out how best to bake stuff in the oven for this video, uh, but like in a regular oven, not the sun oven, um, but basically uh, is that they use boiling water over their rice. And now for me, a lot of the reason that I have a sun oven is not just because it's, it's nice to not heat up the house, things like that. So that is nice uh, to kind of be able to sort of set it and forget it. It's almost like a big crock pot. You can kind of walk away, but you have to go back every half hour or so to make sure that the position is correct. And it's shown via the position of the light in this little, little box out there that I can show you guys when we get out there. So every half hour or so I go out and adjust to make sure that that is still in the optimal position. But other than that, you basically don't have to think about it. It doesn't burn your food. The heat is indirect, so it's not burning anything. Um, but basically one of the main reasons I have that thing is so that I can do off grid cooking of my dry goods. Like if we were in a grid down situation, I didn't have power. If it's, you know, 105 degrees outside and climbing and I do not want to light a fire to boil some water, I have the ability to cook something. And so we're going to try cooking the rice today just with cold water and see what happens. Um, now, if it turns out <laughs> to not be very good, then next time I do this, what I'm going to do is put the water that I would put in the rice, like in a mason jar, and stick that in the oven while it's preheating to heat the water, which then I would use on my rice. But that's like an extra step and it's annoying. And if I can avoid it, let's avoid it. So we're gonna see if we can avoid it today. But basically that's what we're going to do. So yeah, rice in one dish, beans in the other. Let's get to the actual food stuff. All right, I'm doing up the lentils right now. The rice, I basically did just do one and a half cups. And so that's two and a quarter cups of water on top. And that's all I'm doing for the rice. Uh, for the lentils, we're going to dress it up a little bit like curry style. So I have my masala daba here, which is just ridiculously handy. Um, Sorry, there's my spoon getting in the way, um, but I'm gonna throw in one cinnamon stick, or like a half of a cinnamon stick, really. I'm gonna throw in um, some garam masala, because it's just like one of the best spices ever. This is a topping of greens, and then that line was minced garlic. We really love minced garlic, and I think garam masala is just like the king of all spice blends. <laughs> it's my favorite ever. Um, I will add a little extra, just a little turmeric, because of course I will, maybe a few mustard seeds. I think typically black mustard seeds are used, but I use um, the yellow because that's what I have. And then I'm gonna throw in a little coriander, not a lot, and a few cumin seeds. A lot of times these get toasted in oil and added after or toasted in oil before cooking. And that does definitely release a lot more flavor. But we cook mostly oil-free in this house, although that's not, you know, a, a dogmatic thing that we follow. We do put oil in some things, but um, this is, you know, general everyday cooking. I cook without oil, so I find it still incredibly flavorful. Obviously, it's more flavorful if you do it the traditional Indian way, but it's still really delicious um, and we enjoy it. So I will add one broth cube. And, and I also just added a sprinkle of dry ginger um, because I love ginger in all of my food too. Uh, but here's my, my broth cube I'm throwing in for some of that kind of salty flavor. And I will not add salt until I've tasted it and seen whether or not that is enough. And it's almost certainly enough. We love these not chicken bouillon cubes. They're super flavorful. I buy them in bulk on Amazon. I can link them down below. But basically you can pick them up in most natural grocery stores. They do, now that I said we're oil free, they do have a little bit of oil in them, but it amounts to about two grams worth of fat per entire cube. And so I'm, I'm like, I'm fine with that. Uh, just because the flavor, I don't know, the increase in flavor is so much, it, this satisfaction factor increases so much just with that little extra 
whatever thing that that special thing has. And so even though this is not necessarily the most natural thing on earth, you know, every now and then it's, it's just really good and we love it. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and give this just a quick little stir with a spoon. I'm not gonna stir down into the beans. I'm gonna let this be, oh, I totally forgot. I'm adding one more thing, just a second. So um, I freeze, when I have leftover tomato paste, I freeze it by the tablespoon on a little piece of parchment paper, like on a plate in my freezer. Sometimes I'll just open a can of tomato paste and freeze it because it's so handy to use like this. Uh, one tablespoon of tomato plate paste is roughly equivalent to one tomato. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw just a couple of these in there for some more of that curry type experience. And yes, I did basically just throw ice cubes in this thing. So hopefully, it will be okay. <laughs> if I, you know, if I were using it straight from a can, that I guess would be a little bit more ideal for the sun oven, but we're just going to see what happens. Um, again, I have my sun oven because I want to experiment with off-grid cooking and seeing what it would be like if I were cooking just from kind of my dried storage. And obviously this is not really dried storage. And I guess honestly, in more of an off-grid situation, I'd be using the can of tomato paste, not frozen stuff in case we had lost power, um, or dehydrated tomato paste, which I have also done um, for adding into uh, dried things like this, but I'm out of my dehydrated tomato paste, so I'm using this. Um, but basically that's just to make it easy on me today. But if we were again in a situation where I, I don't have dry good storage, what I would probably do is, or I don't have power, and I don't have freezer stuff, I don't have, or I don't wanna open my freezer or whatever, I would use a can of tomato paste and then especially with the heat like it is outside right now, I could basically in my area, I could take my tablespoons of tomato paste and do like a little circle on some parchment on my dryer sheets and I could basically just dry them outside without even turning the dehydrator on because of how hot it is. Um, I know not everybody else would have that option, so otherwise I would say just plan to use the rest of the can of tomato paste in whatever you cook for dinner. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and actually wrap these up with foil and get them inside and show you everything in the actual sun oven. Please, please forgive me for another shot inside, um, but I make a tray. Basically, I get a tray together for carrying both pieces out at the same time, and I get it set up with a little towel underneath. Um, it can help if there happens to be a spill. That's not why, really why it's there. It's there now because I'm just prepping it for when these are super hot and I'm bringing them back inside. So basically I get a tray ready and this is how I carry things to and from the sun oven. We've got spotty sun today. It's only barely past 250. But also if you see here, let me get over here so I can show you. This is what I'm talking about. You need to keep that circle of light centered over the dot in order to make sure that you have optimal heat. And I was inside long enough, probably longer than 30 minutes, because I always check it every 30 minutes, that that optimal window um, went away. So I will readjust it and get stuff inside, even though it is still kind of cool, and then start coming out every half hour to make sure that that circle is where it's supposed to be. Okay, I have everything inside and the needle had dropped to about 250, but it's already back up above 250 because this is the second take. <laughs> I'm getting pretty hot, so let me see if I can do this as quickly as possible. Um, I have it set now so that the optimal window is, is there. The light is on the little dot there, if you see that circle of light. So it is off to one side. I like to set it up like that because the way the sun is traveling, when I come back out here in about a half an hour, that little dot it will be on the right side of that circle instead um, from our point of view, looking at it from behind like this. So basically I'll twist the whole thing and then it will be back. You know, I'll twist the whole thing, get the little dot on the left again and go back inside for another half hour. And that's how we will maintain the optimal window and temperature inside of the sun oven but boy that sun is back out now with a vengeance so off we go all right i've got my adorable little mushroom manual timer on 30 and we'll go back out there when that dings at me <laughs> um i want to say it isn't just me not wanting to film outside 
I was only filming for about five minutes. My phone got super hot already. My phone overheats, that's what I film on. It overheats very quickly outside. So as much as I wanna bring really high quality, nice videos, I think like the one that we made for the brownies, the brownie sun oven video actually turned out quite, quite well with like little shots and music, but we started that at four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> it was already kind of cooling down. I also had help. I had my husband with me. So again, I, I really appreciate those of you who are willing to kind of stick through the video um, without it being super fancy because I just sort of, it's sort of not the, the right time right now to be fancy. And this is not, this all this sweat is not me being dramatic. I wiped my face before I started filming my timer and it's it's already back because it just kind of keeps going. So anyway, all right, yes, I will check again in 30 minutes. Hopefully we will have food done in about an hour to an hour and a half. If I were cooking that on the stove, it would take, you know, 20 to 30 minutes. Um, I've never tried uh, lentils in the oven. So typically for a baked recipe, you're looking at doubling the time from the oven, like in your house to the sun oven, you almost always double the time. So for a stovetop recipe with like beans and stuff, we might be looking at closer to an hour and a half, maybe. So I don't know, this is part of what I'm learning while I'm doing this, so we'll see what happens. All right, it's been about an hour. Let's go see how things are doing outside. All right, with some more direct sun, we are up to about 300. Um, and yeah, so it's been an hour. I have checked it already one time and I'm not seeing any of the condensation on the lid, which is usually what indicates that things are done. So let's give it another half hour. So there was condensation finally on the glass after two and a half hours. <laughs> so this took forever. We have since eaten other things, but let's go ahead and see what we got. All right. I loosened up the foil just enough to, so that I could pull it off one-handed. I haven't looked yet. Oh my gosh. Holy moly, that is like, I think anyway, it is perfectly fluffy, amazing looking rice. I am gobsmacked. I thought it was going to be a mushy mess. Oh my gosh, that looks incredible. Okay, um, let's look over here at the lentils. Okay, yes, those appear fully cooked as well. All right, I might need to have a second lunch. <laughs> but let me show you um, what I like to do to thicken this. So a lot of people will pour coconut oil in it, or not coconut oil, coconut milk at this point. I like to do a combination of two things. Um, yeah, it smells incredible. Um, one of the things I do really like about the Sun Oven as well Sorry, I'm trying to get this out. I guess I'll wait until I'm not filming. <laughs> One of the things I do really like about the sun oven is if you get really close to the sun oven, you can smell. But like I couldn't smell it walking up to it. It was only once I got to the door and I opened it. So people talk about, you know, needing, you know, more covert ways of cooking. And, you know, apart from the fact that the thing itself is huge, if we were putting it in our backyard and it wasn't visible, it wouldn't be sending off the scent of food, even though now that the foil is off. Um, and as I pulled that off, my son actually, or as I was loosening the foil, actually, it was my son was saying, wow, that smells really good. So you can smell the smell once you pull it out, but not so much around it. At least that's been my experience. Um, but let me go ahead and show you kind of what I like to do to cream this up without using coconut milk. Here, we're going to see if I can do this one handed. Um, so I like to add a little bit of uh, soy milk and um, this, it just seems like any, any milk works honestly, or any soy milk will work, but I got to say, I really like soy milk for this. Um, if you were using almond milk or something else, just I'm avoiding the coconut milk because of all of the excess fat, which might seem stupid because I'm also about to put tahini in, which is fat. Um, but it comes with a whole bunch of nutrition that coconut milk doesn't come with, so I feel a little better about it. But basically, soy milk to me personally is the best creaming milk of the plant milks. Um, so if you, for whatever reason, really don't want to use soy milk, I would say just go ahead and use coconut milk then. Uh, but this is what I like to do. I just pour not a ton in, just a little. And normally I would reheat this after, um, but we've been waiting so long anyway. And we're totally going to eat some of this. But basically, I get 
a little bit of tahini, maybe at maximum like a half tablespoon to a tablespoon for this size. Let me see if I can get this in here. Um, so once this all gets mixed together and it sits for even just a little while, um, it'll start getting thick and just really nice. Like it becomes really dreamy and creamy and nice. Um, and so that's basically how I kind of cream up my curries. And let me show you, uh, I have shown before, but let me show again um, the tahini and why I like. So I buy my tahini, I do buy it in a bucket. So um, we're almost to the end of this and I'll get another one. We've used this for a couple of years now. Um, and basically whole seed tahini is all brown. Um, you're probably used to seeing white tahini. If you're using uh, most tahinis purchased at the grocery store, you kind of have to hunt to find this stuff. I do get this on Amazon, um, or I did. I hope I still can. But if you see the nutrition that comes with it, 20% of your calcium for the day and 10% of your iron for the day and only two tablespoons. Now, granted, a ton of fat, but it is still bringing with it the entire sesame seed, which is, you know, nutrition. It's not just about um, the, the fattiness and the creaminess. It's bringing more with it. And so if you don't use tahini, you can use like almond butter, uh, sun butter. Uh, you can do that too. Although I also like tahini because it seems like it is, it's a little more neutral. Sometimes if you add a little too much of the other ones, it will end up tasting like that. But look, this is only just a little while. It's, it's literally seconds and look, you can already see it's, it's thickening up and I just, just like it. So it's not going to necessarily turn it into a gravy. Um, if you don't add a lot, but it'll make it kind of thicker, more like a curry that you get in a restaurant and yeah, I have it with our rice. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait to try this. This looks and smells amazing. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. <laughs> it's kind of incredible. I actually will admit I dipped my spoon um, and just tasted the broth kind of surrounding the curry. Um, but, oh my gosh, I'm really excited. Okay, there we go. Let's see what it tastes like. The whole thing, not the little lick that I cheated before I started filming. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure it was flavored correctly so I could tell you guys what else it would need um, before it was in my bowl. I don't know. Anyway. Oh my gosh. Yep. That's amazing. I honestly, I can't get over this rice. I cannot get over the texture of that rice. That is like the most perfect rice I've ever had in my life. Like really. How do I not make my rice? I'm going to make my rice in the sun oven forever now. <laughs> so I'm wondering, so it took two and a half hours probably largely because of the quantity. <clears throat> I wonder if um, the fact that I was using glass baking pans also had something to do with it. Um, they don't really retain heat as well, I don't think. Like if I were using my stoneware bread pans, would those cook faster because they would retain more heat? So I guess really the, the question would be, um, the, the really the way to test that would be to, um, basically repeat this exact same process, exact same quantities, exact same ingredients, and use the stoneware bread pans instead of the glass, something that retains heat better. Um, I wonder too if the foil also had an effect uh, because yeah, two and a half hours is just kind of a really long time to wait. Um, and so it's just, it's good to know though. It's good to know this takes about two and a half hours. It's definitely worth the, w worth the wait, but this might be something then instead of trying to plan it for lunch, I would plan it more for dinner. I'd probably start it at maybe two and then get it ready maybe by 4.30 or so, and then just kind of keep it in foil. I wonder if I could put it inside my wonder bag to keep it hot. Um, I don't know. So, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff to play with here. My wheels are turning. And so we're going to see, I guess, in the next episode, um, if you are, or in the next part of this series, learning my sun oven. Uh, and I think the quantity too has something to do with it. This is a rather large amount of food for the sun oven. I feel like this could comfortably feed two or three people if they're eating a lot, four or five people if they 
sort of, you know, not don't take quite as much maybe as they might want to. Um, but yeah, I'm overall super thrilled. I'm super thrilled about that rice. That rice is like, I've never cooked the rice before in the sun oven and now I will never stop doing that. So <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I guess let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, what are your thoughts on the process? If you have any ideas, um, is there anything like I was thinking possibly of sticking a piece of parchment paper over the top of the foil, maybe to stop so much of the, the reflection. Um, I wonder if that also might make a difference in the amount of time it takes. Uh, so yeah, there's many, many things to try, but overall still very happy with this, except it did just take way longer, like way longer than I expected it to. Uh, but you know, now moving forward, I know what to expect now. So right. That, that's good. So anyway, all right. As always, I hope the rest of your day is good and your life stays wonderful. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys later. <laughs> Bye.